What the heck is that going on here? We doing some chameleon stuff. We talking chameleon stuff. Hello, everybody. Now, you will notice something. Let's see. We'll get our Instagram people up online. You'll notice that I am not in the kitchen. What the heck is going on? Well, things have been changing in my life. Uh, Yvette is going away. Hey, Tutorial Tom. Hello, Ty. Hello, Bob, Nate, and Robert's channel. Uh, Yvette, my wife, is going away from using fruit flies for her uh, baby Fantasticus. And she is going towards uh, doing all pinhead crickets. Um, and so I am, uh, and so it's like I'm being phased out. I don't, uh, that she doesn't need my fruit flies anymore. And so I'm, I, I'm not making them anymore. And it just, I guess, uh, I guess I should continue making them at least casually because I have, you know, we've got, uh, We've got these guys, but there's only uh, there's only six of them. I think there's only six. So, so uh, yeah, I just got to make enough for one dart frog, and uh, so yeah, I feel like uh, it's the end of an era here. Uh, no, no more, uh, no more colonies of fruit flies here. So, hey, hello, uh, Kristen and Doctor Bob. Break uh, breeding crickets now, Bob. I'm not breeding crickets. Uh, she buys the crickets, and uh, but that's uh, you know she takes care of that. She kind of takes care of all of that stuff. And, uh, so, uh, so I'm not making fruit flies today, and uh, I'm going to hang out here, and we're going to talk about chameleons. Um, one thing. Oh, yeah. One thing I got to say. Um, you know, I've been talking a lot about this book, Mountain Dragons. Um, this is by Jan Sapala. This is uh, one of the most awesome books that we have in the chameleon community. And the thing is, we have about five of these left in the United States. Uh, so, and I know there's, uh, after that, there's about 100 left in the world. So uh, I can try to get some of those uh, those hundred here in the states um, for us because I am pretty selfish and I want us to have them. Uh, but uh, I just want to if if you'd like to get a hold of that book, and I recommend that every chameleon person who has any interest in uh, chameleons, especially of Kenya, Jackson's chameleons, Anelii, uh, Eliotai, any of those, to uh, go ahead pick it up. It's uh, right now available at dragonstrand.com. Uh, this is one of those things where, you know, you get all those salespeople to go, limited time offer. And, you know, the, not trying to be the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the sneaky salesperson here, but uh, they, they are dwindling as far as uh, availability. And uh, they're printed. These are self-printed. So it's not like there's a publisher. It's just one guy, the, the author who self-published and uh, so he's, he's working through them and uh, don't the uh, as to whether he is going to do a second printing or not uh, to be determined. So uh, pick, pick them up now, <laughs> pick it up now uh, because once, uh, once they're gone, like, like a lot of chameleon books, they're gone. Uh Let's see. I use fruit flies for the darts, but the Taribs as adult eat baby roaches, so I don't use fruit flies anymore. Either. Yeah, but I got an Azurius. Although the Azurius is big enough to uh, eat the crickets, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna secretly sneak into the uh, the Fant food stores and steal crickets. So, uh, hey Ashley, welcome. Yep, two turtle Tom. Two turtle Tom knows. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Go ahead and get it done now. It's uh, and we'll get the uh, gosh, I'll be very sad. Those um, that this book was like hardly known about, 
And I brought Jan on and did an interview to to really get it out that uh, what an awesome book this was. And uh, then he allowed me to uh, sell them through Dragon Strand uh, because <laughs> that's where I had the payment processing done. And and so we've been able to uh, get a lot of them into the community, but they're coming to an end. I love this book. Annabelle, hello. Bill, have you ordered the mantis egg sacs and used those as feeders when they hatch? Yes, I have. And they work great. The The one thing is that it's a very different. Uh, mantises eat each other. And so you can't keep them for long um, unless it's a really big uh, uh, enclosure. You got fruit flies to feed them. I mean, each one of them, it's they're like chameleons. You got to keep them separately. And so uh, it's like when they hatch, you do a lot of feeding. And uh, maybe you can keep some. Um, but uh, yeah. Let's see. But you can you those are great feeders chameleons love them love mantises crowley started eating plant soil it's plenty of soldier flies and their larvae crickets waxworm drink give them calciums there's something he's missing read he might be well okay well Kristen, i'll tell you what we know about geophagia uh geophagia is when a living organism eats the dirt. Uh, there, we see this in human beings as well. Any, any, uh, and uh, the prevailing thought is that it is uh, someone uh, being deficient in minerals, trying to get it from the earth. Uh, but it's very difficult to hold on to that and say this is the this is the real reason because you're talking about a chameleon and we already know that we're uh, over supplementing them as it is. We don't know about how much and it doesn't seem to be hurting them. So that's why uh, that figuring it out, figuring out how much we're over supplementing them is at a uh, low priority right now. Uh, but they should be having everything they need from the diet with what we've got available to them right now. And, and if it wasn't, we would assume that we would be seeing this in many more chameleons. So why is do some chameleons, even when they have all of this, go down and start shoveling uh, dirt into their mouth? And the answer is we don't know. We just don't know. And there's not a consistent solution to this. And so... I, I'm afraid I'm not going to have a satisfying answer for you. Uh, we it's we haven't been able to figure out the pattern as to which chameleons start this, and and I mean if if there's a chameleon that's in poor husbandry, yeah, there's all sorts of things we can fix, but this happens uh, to um, chameleons that are in great husbandry. So uh, we don't know. Uh, I would just keep giving him the very nutritious uh, diet that you have. Uh, you can you can put large pebbles on the the top of the soil so he can't get at it. Um, and of course, that's assuming that. Uh, but the thing is, we don't know why he's doing it. Is there something in the soil that he needs? Uh, and, and it's always possible that. Each, I mean, these are individual, these are living beings. And so they have as many variations as humans do. And maybe this one has a specific deficiency that we don't see in most chameleons. And so that's how he's self-medicating. Uh, but all of this is just wondering. We don't know. We just don't know. So uh, I would say just keep giving them all the nutrition that you have. And uh, yes, you can put those large pebbles on the ground to keep them from eating the dirt. Is eating the dirt dangerous? Uh, it depends on what he gets in. Usually it just kind of flows through, but some rocks can get stuck if uh, there's, you know, we'd rather he do doesn't because, you know, generally it's not, not easily digestible. 
have new shamrocks adjusted, holding good weight. Some have adjusted, some are uh, struggling. We have, uh, I have it still cold here. So uh, a lot of them are kind of into a brumation type thing, but um, uh, you know, I got a, I got a pretty good group. Hey, Chris. Would love to hear conversation on my Parsons. Seventh month is fogged seven plus hours, 100%, but still has interest in dripper. Only for a few minutes, but still drinks. I give him dripper. Drip, mist. Uh, give him as much as he wants. Um, we, we have been able to fully hydrate Parsons chameleons by fogging. That said... I don't think any of us uh, will limit our Parsons to fogging. Um, and we use a generous uh, combination of fogging, misting, dripping, everything. And so um, just because we can do it one way doesn't mean we should. I mean, we can raise chameleons on one feeder insect, uh, crickets. And we can uh, feed them that their whole life, but we're not going to. So I wouldn't worry about the fact that your Parsons wants to drip uh, drink from the dripper gives an indication that he needs more hydration. Uh, and so uh, give it to him. Give it to him. Give him hydration until he won't drink from the dripper anymore. Uh, uh, but then you got to consider... Is he drinking because he's dehydrated? Take a look at the poop. Chameleons do stuff that amuses them. And so we're assuming, and it's a safe assumption, that he's dehydrated. And so he wants to drink. That's the best assumption. But if you keep giving them hydration and his poops are nice and, and moist, but he still likes to drink from the dripper, there's just consider the possibility that that amuses him. I mean, we got chameleons that will, that see a drip and they'll shoot it out with their tongue. I think they're just having fun because I mean, they don't have to shoot it with their tongue. <laughs> they can just lick it off the leaves. So, um, yeah, uh, it's our job to consider all, uh, all, uh, possibilities. Could it be what dinosaurs do with rocks helps mash food? Um, because we don't know why they eat the soil, we'll, we'll take any possibility. Uh, and it, I mean, this is, this is a good thing to consider. This is one of the things, put it on the table and let's see, because uh, right now, the soil in our plants is the only thing available to them. If they have some instinct that says go down and eat rocks, um, he's going to do it with whatever's in the cage and we don't have Madagascar soil here. So, I mean, it's a possibility. And don't, don't anybody go off and say, Oh, Bill says that he's using geophagia for, uh, for roughage. I, what I'm saying is we need to, if we don't know why we need to consider all the possibilities and this is a good uh this is good come up with ideas and we test them all right poop is perfect all right well and, and also this is uh, the parsons it could be that uh the extra that they're getting from the dripper is doing it sufficiently so just continue doing what you're doing uh, unless you see a reason to change up, do what you're doing. I, I am uh, I am a strong proponent that you don't change your, uh, if what you're doing is working, be hesitant to change it to match uh, whatever the newest ideas are. Um, do that, transition that slowly, that slowly. Let's see. James always runs his misters for about 15 to 20 minutes on Sunday. And Parsons will definitely do some drinking, even though they're totally hydrated. Yeah. Let's uh let's overdo it 
I'm all for that. Hello, Don. Don Keish. Hello. And Nick is finishing taxes. Ooh, taking it to the <laughs> taking it to the last minute. Oh yes. Eric, thank you very much for the support. Donnie, keep crushing it, Bill. Thank you. Hello, Eliza Ann. So uh watching a cam drink is as amazing as watching them hunt. Yes. Yes, there's so many wonderful things. And, uh, and here's something that we've uh, we can uh, watch. Uh, see in that uh, enclosure back here, I have uh, I'm trying different chameleons in there to see which ones really like that. And right now I have a female Christatus in there, and I hardly ever see her. She looks gravid, and so we very well may have some eggs laid in there, and uh, we'll have to see. I'm hoping that I can catch her so I know where they are. That enclosure, that's the custom reptile habitats, the arboreal L, uh, XL. That's got a lot of, I don't know that I'll be able to find. Everything is planted in there, and so if she lays eggs in there, I'm going to have to let them incubate in there. Probably, I, I, unless I can find them, I'm going to have to let them incubate in there. And uh, luckily, this is a Christatus. They're lowland. They don't need any diapause. Um, but uh, I, I've got some areas that I set aside for her to lay, if she's going to lay. And uh, hopefully she takes those because I can see those. But uh, anyway, we've got a interesting situation back there. They may mess up my plans, but... Then again, uh, having chameleons hatch out in that enclosure would be such an incredible experience that I, I would not regret it one bit. So, uh, someone's listening to Richie Havens in the background. Okay. Um, how deep is the substrate level in the custom reptile habits enclosure that they are playing it? It is nine inches. And that's a little, a uh, little deep. My one concern is it's nine inches of bioactive soil. So there isn't, it'll be a while until she hits the, uh, a solid area to lay her eggs again. So I hope she, uh, I hope that doesn't cause a problem. Let's see what, um, the uh, the problem that we've had in the past is we keep giving chameleons 12 inches of soil and watching them dig all the way down. And the this is there has been a misinterpretation that they dig all the way down because they want to dig deep. No, they're they're digging to find uh, a, 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 a a tough packed soil to lay their eggs against. They really only want to dig three inches. That's as far. Remember, the babies have to dig up out of this thing. And so they're not going to go down 12 inches in the wild. Uh, that's a artifact of captivity. And it's funny, we got these old time breeders that are just stuck on that. No, my, my chameleons would never lay in five inches of soil. Yeah, they will. In fact, they prefer it. You make them dig all the way down 12 inches and then they start tunneling and the tunnels collapse on them. And then I mean, that's life threatening. That's not what, that's not what they do. So, um, yeah, so it is for the new breeders who aren't stuck on their old ways. Just give them five inches. They'll, they'll do fine. Parsons chameleons will lay in five inches. Uh, my first time being able to jump on the live. Hello, Mike. I've been working on building out a bioactive enclosure for hopefully soon to hatch panther. Well, hello, Mike. Welcome. We enjoy. And you know what I love is that you're building out a great enclosure just for a hatchling. I think that is one of our uh, greatest uh, points of growth in the near future for the chameleon community is considering hatchlings and investing in hatchlings as individuals. And so... Um, 
you know, they, they've always been treated as, as transitory. I've got hatchlings. I'm going to sell them in three months. And so just, just feed them until they get ready to be sold. We, I believe we should treat the, the uh, hatchling months as a very special time and invest in making those months the best possible. And so that's my, that's my personal passion. Yeah, I made the mistake in the nineties. It was too deep. Yeah, I it, it was with me too. I mean, and I just kept giving them deeper, and I thought I was doing great to give them twelve inches. And then one time a tunnel collapsed. I'm saying, what the heck? Why are we doing this? And then I saw chameleons in the wild. They're not digging down that way. They're digging a couple of inches. And then when I saw Parsons chameleon, you know, I had these large outdoor enclosures with. Um, a lot of different soils, and uh, and then of course, uh, and that 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 told me this is what they like to do. And then I go to Madagascar and I catch a female pardalis laying eggs a few inches. They're not going down twelve. Uh, so. Have you ever noticed they make a U-shaped tunnel? Whenever my female laid in a potted plant, it would never be straight line. It would always hook up. Um, yeah, after six inches, they're starting to tunnel. And uh, we want them not to tunnel. Uh, that's they're, they're not supposed to be tunneling. Chameleons want to lay. They're laying their eggs with their head above the ground. You notice that whenever you see chameleons in the wild laying eggs their head is above the ground and they're not straight up and down they're a little bit angled and whether it's parsons symbaltiatus minor pardalis they're all this way and even we'll see i've seen that and so uh we should this is how we can uh change what we're doing in captivity yeah so, uh, anyway, everybody, um, for next week, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, is, uh, having a Monday video and that's going to be one of the uh, chameleon Academy, uh, something a little bit more substantial video. Uh, and then, and, uh, tomorrow's video is going to be uh, about making your own planter box cage. You know, the, the, the cages I have that I have outside on wheels, so it's gonna be about how you build one of those yourself. And then we are going to have uh, Wednesdays, DIY Chameleon Guys. And so video-wise during the week, I'm gonna go down to two videos and each one of those videos is going to have a uh, the premiere chat. So. Monday, tomorrow morning, I'll be there at 5 a.m. And then Wednesday at 5 a.m., I'll be there in the chat. And so that's going to be the schedule going forward. I'm experimenting with new new things to do on YouTube. Uh, for those who didn't hear the, uh, and, and and I say that because I just apologize to the people who've heard this story before. Uh, I, I was uh, doing the daily thing to train myself how to do videos. And once I got to uh, 52, I'd essentially done a year's worth of YouTube videos in uh, like two and a half months. And so that was my, yeah, it was like two months. And so I had achieved my goal. Uh, and I, so I'm now, I'm now wanting to go on and finish the Chameleon Fundamentals series that, that I started. And I really want to put my effort into it. And so uh, you're going to be seeing some higher quality videos coming out from me. And, uh, and of course, I've got to take the time to do that. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Let's see. I packed the bottom three inches super tight now with about two inches. Oh, that's perfect. Two inches on top. Yep, that is perfect. Nice. Callie is beautiful. And thank you, Bill, for the Dragon Starring Cage. We love it too. Excellent. And so does Crowley. Yes. And uh, Kristen is uh, one of the Dragon Strand 
uh, cages that we uh, did an analysis on with the uh, Forest Edge 5 plus uh, 5 plus 5. Okay. So, all right. So, please, everybody, do you have questions or comments or topics of discussion for us to discuss here? Um, go ahead, put them in the comments. I am actually going to make this a shorter live today uh, because I do have some uh, chameleon chores that I got to do that I can't do while I'm on camera because I would just be sprawled all over and I just wouldn't be able to get work done while being on camera. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, making this a half session. And uh, going forward, because I'm not doing... Uh, fruit flies anymore. I am going to reduce my live sessions to Tuesday and Saturday, the Tuesday and Saturday shows. Uh, and so this will be the last Sunday that I do, uh, at least for the time being. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm evaluating my outreach. There are some things that I'm going to be coming out with that are I'm just so excited about. And uh, unfortunately, I can't say anything because I don't like to say what I'm going to do. I like to say what I've done. You know, it's so easy for people to just talk about what they're going to do with all these great ideas. And do you ever see a whole lot of execution? Yeah, about 10% execution. And so I make it a point. I never talk about what I'm going to do because that's like, nah, you don't deserve to get credit for those ideas until you actually execute because ideas are cheap. You give, uh, just give a, a, a campfire and a 12 pack and you'll get more ideas than you can do in a lifetime. No, it's execution that really uh, is important. And so uh, I don't like taking credit for an idea until I'm, I've actually executed it. Then, then I can take credit for it. So uh, let's see. Where do you find the vining variety of geraniums? Uh, Don, I go to Home Depot, just uh, Ivy Geranium. It's uh, They're always there. Uh, they're, they're mixed in with the regular geraniums. So you got to know it's kind of like the smooth leaf geranium, but uh, they're, they're in, uh, uh, in Home Depot. What is the proper way to give chameleons medicine? Any experience with threat to boost? Um, um. Uh, well, okay, the proper way to give chameleons medicine is through uh, vet supervision. Uh, and it really makes a difference as to whether it's uh, uh, oral or injected. Uh, any experience with Repto Boost? Yeah, I've done Repto Boost before. And just got to get the chameleon's mouth open. Sometimes that's easy. Sometimes it's an adventure. And then you squirt it in. But you got to make sure that you don't squirt it into their lungs. You got to squirt it into the big, hollow, gaping tube in back, not the little one down here, because you don't want to asphyxiate them. Hey, Southern Pacific and Exotics. Love being able to be here. Thank you for much time. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. What's your favorite carnivorous plants and do you utilize them in their cage? Bob, my favorite, <clears throat> hard to tell. I love them all. Uh, well, some of them I'm not too fond of, but uh, I love the cephalotus, the Western, um, the Australian pitcher plant. But the only carnivorous, uh, Venus flytrap has always been my favorite. Uh, but the the ones I utilize in my cages are the uh, Nepenthes tropical pitcher plants, which, oh, you see them right there, right back here. Yeah. There they are. Uh, and when I have a problem with uh, the fungus gnats, I put in the butterworts or maybe a sundew. Uh, to get rid of all of them. But the problem with carnivorous plants is most of them are, are short. Of course, the pitcher plants are large. But most of them are short, and so they need a lot of sun. And so if you really want to do them well, you can't have them on the cage floor. you got to have them way up. And if you have them way up near the lights where they're going to do well, then it's like it really, you don't, it, it's hard to appreciate them. Also, my favorites, Venus flytraps, they need a cooling period. And so you got to take them out at winter, put them in the refrigerator. 
And so the temperate uh, car the uh, temperate carnivores aren't as convenient. And that's like all the North American pitcher plants, the Venus flytrap. So um, really, there's just a, a couple of Nepenthes variants, Alata, uh, Ventrata, which is a combination between Ventricosa and Alata, I believe that's the names, and Miranda. Those three are the ones that do well. You know, there's highland and there's lowland pitcher, uh, tropical pitcher plants. Lowland wants it too hot uh, for the normal, com normal chameleon cage. The highland needs it too cold. And so we need something right in the middle. So uh, carnivores, you can do some carnivores, but it's not convenient. And and very there's very little risk. Unless you're talking about a baby chameleon, there's very little risk to the chameleon. Yesterday, you mentioned you did a live chat all about Triasaurus anilii. Can't believe I missed it. What's the title so I can go? Oh, uh, Deanna, um, I didn't do a live chat. I, what I did was a uh, a video on Honelli, uh, Honelii. <laughs> and so just go to the uh, the uh, the chat, the um, the video list here in on YouTube. Go to the video list, check out all the videos for Chameleon Academy and you know, within the top last five videos is the one where uh, I, I show the, uh, it's just the one about Honelii. And so you can find it. It's there, it's available, and it's cute. Do you ever think you can do a chameleon feeding chore night where we get to see you feed some of your favorite animals? Well, I can consider that. I will consider that. It's a fine idea. Question about Crowley color. He has shed a few times now. He's a tan color, but his other color, red and blue, comes out if I have a pick. You think he's growing healthy? Ah. Yeah, chameleons, um, they color up differently. At, I mean, each individual colors up differently. So I mean, you got to wait until he's... Uh, th there's no reason to be concerned until he grows up. Uh, and uh, most, <laughs> most every time, the colors come in just fine. So I... As a chameleon is growing up, I'm not worried at all about their colors and when they come in and that kind of stuff. What picture do you have in that case? In that case, this is the Nepenthes ventrata. Uh, and that is the typical uh, variety you find at Home Depot and Lowe's and stuff. But as you say, oh, Home Depot, how can that be special? Well, they have it specifically been hybridized to... Uh, do well in room temperatures. So that's why it's perfect. Perfect for us. Hey, Bill, I have key. K. Uh -huh. All right. Is there something I should do other than flying black soldier flies? I've never had them, so I'm not sure if they're too big for my juvenile. Uh, they're probably, I don't know. Try it. Try it. They're probably too big big but not for an adult and they'll get to an adult soon enough so but the thing is sometimes uh you know i've had a lot of the uh the black soldier fly larvae they pupate they come out and they uh, become flies but they're just like miniature flies it's like they didn't I, I don't know maybe they weren't given enough uh um nutrition don't know but uh uh the the ones i was hatching out uh, we're, we're okay. So you just get them and try them and, uh, and see how it is. But, uh, your, your juvenile is going to go grow pretty quickly. And yes, uh, yes. House flies are great. They're great. Thinking Highland for the Jacksons. Yeah. Well, Bob, just make sure you can provide the proper requirements for those Nepenthes. I mean, people get have to go really serious for those. My Wilsey pair stopped eating, so I gave him a dose of the Reptaid, and I'm afraid it went down the wrong hole. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. They will asphyxiate.
kept Jackson's for a while. Believe they have passed away. I believe uh, it's low grade heat stress. Wondering if 67 degrees at night would be enough for one. I don't think so. I think they, they want them. They want it in the low sixties that I don't know where the differentiate the delineation is, but uh, 67, I believe is too warm. So I would say 62, get into low 60, below 65. I mean, 64, it doesn't sound like a, that big of a difference, but uh, just getting it down to lower 60s would be very useful. Black soldier flies more nutritious than larvae or once they pupate into flies. Um, Fergie, the black soldier flies are more nutritious as larvae and that's because they eat and eat and eat as larvae and then once they start pupating they will not eat again and so the pupation takes up energy and then the flies don't have they don't eat they just live for seven days and die and so once it becomes a, a fly uh every day that that fly lives is decreasing in nutrition uh, and so the flies are great as far as uh, enrichment and your chameleon enjoying chasing something that's flying. But nutrition-wise, the larvae are better. It's five months old. He loves soldier fly. Yeah. Generally, chameleons just love the soldier flies. They are incredible. All right, folks, I am going to uh, call it 20 minutes early because I got to get, I've got a long night uh, ahead of making cages. And uh, I look forward to uh, sharing uh, that this week is going to, there's going to be a lot going on this week. So I look forward to uh, sharing. I'll be able to share on Saturday. I'll, I'll still be working on Tuesday when we have our live on Tuesday. Um, set up and been maintaining them in a five by five grow tent it's hard to agree but very much fun when you expect to see the first when do you expect to first see the first shed oh it could be any time i i expect it pretty quickly uh, a hatchling's job is to grow and grow quickly now jackson's grow slower than a veiled chameleon but uh still uh, i would expect to see it very soon how do you get it lower air conditioning robert's channel there is just no way around it. Uh, when I have my Jackson's Chameleon, like uh, the, I have an air conditioner in the room of the Jackson's Chameleon. Even when I was in, like I was in the Bay Area by San Francisco and those houses don't always have air conditioning and I had to rent. And so I <laughs> I moved once a, once a year. Um, and I had a bank of portable air conditioners that went with me wherever my chameleons went. The chameleon room, had an air conditioner, and that's the only way to do it. I mean, they, you can, people try uh, swamp coolers, they try all sorts of, you know, ice in the fog, all sorts of different things. Those are all band-aids. You want to do it right, get an air conditioner, put it in the window, or else get one of those uh, portable air conditioners. Uh, it still needs an exhaust to the window, but you don't have to install one in the window if you get a portable air conditioner. And they're pretty easy to use just get one and then but it's got to be an air conditioner uh, there's no way around it uh, it really isn't so, um, so uh, yeah hop off me you <laughs> do your chameleon choice thank you very much eliza ann yes i am taking your advice you 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 have given me wise counsel all right everybody thank you very much for joining me here i will be at the uh, chat tomorrow on the premiere at 5 a.m and then my live next live will be tuesday at 5 p.m pacific and we'll be right back here so thank you for joining me and i'll see you later <laughs>